so my talk is on the pentacam interpretation okay so when and why do we do a pentacam so you need to rule out keratoconus you need to do it before any refractive surgery so this is a picture of a, a smile that is being done this is for a lasik you also need it for evaluation of any kind of astigmatism that you have particularly when you're planning for a toric il and also you can do it for post keratoplasty cases uh, when you're planning for a suture removal and there are other uses as well but the main thing that you need to look on is the keratoconus part so for the opd purposes you should always do is you should check your k reading so if any value is above 46.5 that's what i tell my students is get a pentacam done uh, so how is pentacam different from the other topography devices it's that it is not a topography device in fact it is a tomography device so what happens in tomography is that the primary source of data measurement is the height that is the anterior and the posterior elevation and the, on the basis of that the curvature is calculated in comparison to the topography devices or the presido based devices so what does the pentacam includes pentacam means five so it includes a schlemfag image a 3d chamber analyzer a cataract analyzer a pachymetry and the corneal topography so before we go on to the concept of how to read a pentacam i would like to show you this picture over here so this over here if you see this yellow line that you see over here is what you would call as the cornea now this is something that the blue thing you can call as a reference sphere so the normal cornea if is a pro, is prolate in nature so this rises above this reference sphere and resulting in a central disc which you see in the other picture in the form of a reddish orange area over here and then it is followed immediately surrounding there is a there is an annular c so it goes little bit down and where this shows in a blue color over here and then in the far periphery it again there are peripheral islands that it elevates a little bit over the reference sphere so you have these reddish orange straight areas on four sides over here let's skip this slide yeah so when you do a pentacam there are important color codings are very important remember that red is there's red and then you shift according to this color so red anything when you see red in the pentacam it means something is abnormal and when it is a little bit lower value you will shift towards the blue colors so when you do a pentacam it is important to exclude con exclude contact lens use now this should be done at least 7 to 10 days before you do a pentacam otherwise your readings will be wrong other causes such as misalignment large angle kappa dry eyes or a opacity or a scar and previous corneal surgeries you need to exclude them or they will give you different data or the data will not be as reliable uh, in such cases so let this is what a pentacam actually looks like uh, so uh, if you look over here let's start by reading this so the first thing that you see over here is the qs this is this then you see the k max then you see i go all all of these by one by one then the thinnest location that you see over here then the y axis deviation of it then the ac depth more important is the internal deviation in comparison to the external deviation and then followed by the q value and this is the quantitative analysis and before this you need to see the age of the patient and the eye of the patient and then you go to the the quad map analysis I and mean, these you see four maps over here you have the anterior curvature the anterior elevation the posterior elevation and finally the thickness maps this is now the pentacam has this advantage so over here you have the 11th point that is the mean corneal thickness values you have the corneal thickness spatial profile and the percentage tissue increase and then you have this melan embryo enhanced ectasia display and then you need to look at the inter eye symmetry so let us start by one thing so the first thing is the qs or the quality specification it should be okay if you have it that means it's a good scan if you get something like a data or a red mark over here or a red line over here it means it's a bad scan and this is not reliable then you need to look at the k max so k max generally should be less than 47.2 then you look at the thinnest location it is indicated in the quad maps by this sign and this should be less than 470 for uh, for more than 470 for a normal thing and you look at the y axis deviation of this because keratoconus also results in deviation in the y axis so this this should be less than minus uh, should be less than 0.50 mm the ac depth is important the internal ac depth more important should be more than 2.8 particularly when you're doing a fake gyre then the q value should be between 0 to minus 1 mm so when you're looking at the quad maps the red color as i had said earlier so this is the anterior sagittal map or the curvature map so this shows an asymmetrical bow tie pattern as you can see over here 
So different patterns can be seen in symmetrical shapes. You can get a round pattern, you can get an oval pattern, so you can get a symmetrical bow tie pattern. And you can also have some asymmetrical shapes like the superior steepening. This is an asymmetrical bow tie with, su with uh, superior steepening. This is an inferior steepening. This is an asymmetrical bow tie with inferior steepening. Now, this is what this, this picture you can see. It is a curvature map. And this shows a somewhat a symmetrical bow tie pattern. You have some asymmetrical shapes also. So these asymmetrical shapes can be uh, as I had shown over here. Okay, let's, uh, so let's go to the skewed shapes first. So when you go to the skewed shapes over here, what does skewed mean? So when you draw a line through this axis and over here through this, when this angle, this angle that is formed over here greater than 21 degrees, then it is known as a uh, skewed shape. Uh, it is known as a skewed shape. So when this angle is more than 21 degrees, it is known as a skewed shape. This, this is a symmetrical bow tie with a skewed radial axis. And this can be an asymmetrical bow tie with a skewed radial axis. Generally, the books that what has been described is the asymmetrical bow tie with a skewed radial axis in case of keratoconus. However, you can get the other shapes also. The other special shapes are the butterfly shape, the crab claw shape, and the vertical D shape. You can have some irregular shapes also for in case of a scar of previous surgery or a pterygium surgery. So coming to the elevation map. So you have the anterior elevation map and the posterior elevation map. So, and the, in these elevation maps, when you look at it, you can have different pictures. You can have a central island or you can have an hourglass pattern as you can see. So when you're taking the anterior elevation maps, this should ideally be less than 12 microns. This area over here, what has been displayed over here. Otherwise, and in the posterior elevation, it should be less than 15 microns. Any data which goes beyond 12 is suspicious in the anterior elevation and more than 15 in the posterior elevation map is suspicious. And particularly if it is anterior is more than 15 and posterior is more than 18, then you can think of, you know, this is going in the lines of keratoconus. So when then coming to the thickness maps, as you can see in this thinnest location is shown over here in the quad map, this area is shown over here. So I'll go, I'll skip the X axis deviation. I'll come to the Y axis deviation should be less than minus 0.5. This is over here minus 2.33, which is more than that. So this shows a bell shape with an inferior thinning. This is a case of keratoclopus where you can see generalized thinning all over. So in this thickness map, you can see thinning in this area. This is 416 microns. So this is, you can think about, you know, there is some abnormal pathology over here. Coming to this, I'll skip these, these, uh, this map over here. Now coming to the next point, this, this photo I've shown purposely for one reason. See, when you have, if, if this is the baseline, if the C is the baseline over here, and you try to compare this mountain that is over here with this mountain, the difference between these two mountains will be very less. However, if a reference plane is drawn over here, then the difference between this mountain and this mountain will be much more. So therefore, this is the concept of the best uh, of the enhanced ectasia display that has been devised by Dr. Bellin and Dr. Ambrosio. So this is what it shows over here. So this is the best fit sphere that I had described firstly. This is the enhanced ectasia display. Now, this enhanced ectasia display shows that difference that it's when you have it above at a plane where the two mountains, which are almost same, can be compared and the difference comes out. So over here, you can see this is normal, but this sometimes the difference is more exaggerated. You don't get it in the anti and the posterior elevation in the quad maps, but two maps <coughs> show this difference. This is the anterior, the posterior, and this is the difference between these, these two. So let's look at this case over here. Okay, so you can look over the in this case over here. This is an asymmetrical bow tie pattern with a superior steepening. This is somewhat okay. There is a plus 14 uh, elevation over here, plus 17 over here, somewhat suspicious. There is thinning over here, but not too much. All these values are fine apart from the K-max, which is 47.9. But when you look at the Bell and Embrasio Enhanced Ectasia display, you see that there is some amount of posterior elevation. And keratoconus is a disease that starts from the posterior surface. So therefore, this is a case of keratoconus. I'll skip this part also. Coming for some examples. As I had said, you can see the K1, K2 is okay, is raised over here. The scan is fine. Q value is raised. You can see that there is some amount of thinning over here. K max is 59.5. You see a symmetrical bow tie pattern over here. Elevation on the anterior and the posterior surfaces coinciding with the area of thinning. This indicates it is a keratoconus eye. And you can see the same in this 
other picture on the bell and embryo enhanced ectasia display this is a similar case of keratoconus to the paucity of time i'll skip on to the next uh, thing yeah so let's look at this over here k1 k2 is fine k max is little bit 46.3 thinnest cornea is fine <coughs> sorry over here you see a symmetrical bow tie pattern every other scan is fine so this is suggestive of with the rule astigmatism if you have against the rule astigmatism this will be 90 degree opposite like this so coming to this this slide over here you see that this is a somewhat it's an irregular shape there is no anterior posterior elevation there is thinning over here however there is and even all these values are fine the bellona embryo and ansectasia display is also fine so apart from the thin cornea there is nothing abnormal over here so this would be a case of thin corneas look at this pattern now this is another slide this is a borrowed picture you can see a pattern over here. this is a crab claw pattern okay this is suggestive of what we all cause as a pellucid marginal degeneration so when you think of this look at this now an important point to differentiate is the pmd from the keratoconus in the area of keratoconus the area of thinning and the elevation will coincide however the area if you look over here this is the area of thinning and the elevation is above this the elevation area is above this or this is the curvature area the steepening but the elevation is above this so you will see this is a case of pellucid marginal degeneration this is another picture over here you can see there is a very steep cornea it is generalized thinning over here so this would indicate a case of keratoglobus so this when you see something something blue 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 and these corneas are absolutely flat this means that and it's thin over here this means this is a post refractive surgery either a post prk or a post lasik however this is a case of post prk you can't differentiate those two on the basis of entacam uh so this another case you can see some greenish bluish area over here this could be slight decentered ablation but not too much but this is in another case of post lasik so look at this slide over here last slide there what i'm showing is you can see a uh, crab pattern over crab claw pattern over here there is some sort of elevation over here Coinciding K max is also increased. Everything is abnormal in this condition over here. So this is a keratoconus. However, it look it has a crab claw pattern. So you will call it a pellucid like keratoconus. So I'd end over here by just showing the two reasons why we have the pentacam, Professor Michael Bellin and Professor Renato Ambrosio Jr. And they have made life for us cornea surgeons very much easy. Thank you so much. Uh, that was a talk, uh, and uh, really it was a uh, uh, comprehensive to uh, you know show the cases of uh, different cases including keratoconus post uh, pellucid marginal degeneration in post lasik also so uh, uh, i would like to ask dr namrata ma'am ma uh, that you have been also uh, you have uh, uh, at aims you, you have multiple pgs and uh, exam center is also there and uh, so what is actually basically expected from a post graduate in an exam uh, when the pentacam print outs are given like what is expected out of the minimum at least so i think they should be able to pentacam once it pentacam comes then they should be able to diagnose ectasia you know they will give you a picture of say they'll say post lasik has been done so if it's a post lasik ectasia or not or keratoconus if it is there it is it's not or pellucid marginal degeneration or you know keratoglobus so basically not not too much in detail but you should be able to diagnose these four five clinical entities on pentacam that is generally what is asked if you are performing too well then they will just say you know this is say after post they uh, say can we want to plan retreatment can we plan or not but it never goes to that limit basically they are looking at you know keratoconus and type of keratoconus what type of keratoconus is there from there you know uh, it will go on to uh, go on to pachymetry uh, what is the cut off what should be the residual bed thickness but i think these four things if they are able to diagnose on a pentacam map then it is good enough i think karan really explained it very well and you actually need to know only this much because if you look at the pentacam uh, folder or pen pentacam you know the manual it's too much i don't think they require that much so once the map comes any map any specular if you can just you know uh, scientifically answer that because examiner has very little time for you so scientifically if you start to exam answer that you know that this is a four quad map this is saying this this is saying this at at the first instance only 
you know the examiner comes to know whether you know or not yes ma'am thank you so much uh karan uh, should we uh, move to the next stop yeah yes i before we move on to the next stop we have also been joined over here by dr guru prasad ayachit sir sir is the uh, director of the mm joshi i institute and he's been my teacher he'll be a part of the panelists for tomorrow's session i welcome you sir for today's session thank you karan but uh, i am in the opd so i will not be able to join the webinar i'll join sure, tomorrow sir. sure sir sure sir sure sir so uh, thank you namrata ma'am for this uh, wonderful talks and you know those wonderful suggestions would you like to add anything else you know before we move on to the next session of glaucoma ma'am you're on mute what i'm saying is you can move to the next one because as far as the pentacam or anterior segment octi or specular i think it has been covered well from the exam point of view 